a little note in a second here. So let me quick repeat what we just did here. Uh, we've got a clock. We set the clock time to 100 milliseconds. We connected a variable LED uh, to the output, not a regular digital one. And you can change the color if you want. Um, I'm, I'll change it to blue here just for fun. Um, and then a max value, an 8-bit input. And you can change this to whatever you want. And you should discover that your LED gets brighter and brighter, in this case, come bluer and bluer, until it reaches this maximum value, which I'll reduce here slightly, at which point it should reset back to zero again. Um, and so you can very quickly, I'll just do this one so it's small, it'll count up, get bluer and bluer. When it reaches your max value, it'll reset. All right, hold on your shift key and copy the first part of this again, just so we don't have to redo it. So copy that. Control C or Command C, click down below somewhere, and then Command V it. And I'm not really happy with the placement here, but I'll fix that in a second. Holding down my Shift key, moving this again a little bit over. Um, the LED is cute and all, but it'd be nicer to have some other displays, and that's what we're going to move into today a little bit. Um, if you look over here under Outputs, there's a hex display tool. And so we're going to drag two of those over here. And now if you look at this, I don't know if it shows you here, the only input it has here is a single input. The problem is, is that um, each hex digit is just four bits. Um, right now, remember our counter counts up in eight bits, um, but each digit is just one nibble or four bits of that. So how do we fix that? How do we separate the eight bits into the four and four? And to do that, we're gonna use a new tool today that we haven't used before. And I can never find it when I'm looking for it. So I always just search for it. It's called a splitter. Actually, that's enough of it right there. It's this little thing right here. What you can do is it takes a bunch of bits and then splits them into whatever grouping you want. So if you click on this, the first thing it's gonna ask you is, hey, what's the input bit width? In this case, we're taking the output of our counter, so it's eight bits is what's coming into our, our splitter. And then how do we wanna split it up? And here's where it gets kind of fun. You can simply say, I wanna split it to four and then a space four and say, okay. And then if you drop it on here, you're like, wait, Mr. Clummer, what in the world? Yeah, um, because bits are always numbered from zero, up to a maximum value. This top one here is bit zero through three, the first four bits. And this is bits four through seven, the upper four bits. And I always forget which is our output. Yep. So we're gonna connect that to our value output. So eight bits going into our splitter. And the lower three bits, or sorry, lower four bits are gonna go into this display. And then the upper four bits are gonna go into this display. And what you should see now is this thing actually counting in hexadecimal. It's displaying the eight bits, but on this display, and I've actually haven't tried these yet. Can you actually switch? Oh yeah, you can switch the colors. Can you like, some I don't like red. Yeah, you can make a native color. I've actually never tried this. Can you do orange? Yes, you can. Okay, I don't know if orange is a pretty color. Blue is nice, um, but you can change the color of your displays and these displays are will display whatever the counter goes until your counter reaches its maximum value, at which point it's going to reset. If you set these all the ones, yeah, it's going to go all the way up to FF um, before it resets, and you should get some nice colors. You're like, Ms. Clomber, it's still counting too slow. Yeah, if you're still counting too slow, you can change your clock. I've never tried going really fast. Oh, yeah, you can go really fast. Um, and yeah, you can make it count super uber fast um, if you want. I don't know if I like my displays this far apart, but okay. Yeah, yeah. all right, never mind. not gonna move it. All right, um, I'm gonna slow my clock down just a little bit again, uh, just because, oh, 50 apparently is the smallest you can go, um, just to kind of make sure my browser isn't overwhelmed with updating things. All right, now, the next thing we're gonna work with is something we haven't or never seen before. Um, and this is the part I actually kind of wondered about today. And where is it under? Is it under sequential elements? Yeah, it is, I think. 
That's read-only memory. There it is. Under sequential elements, you'll find RAM. And this is my big question for you, Dave. Do you all know what RAM stands for? And I'm like, wait, uh, they should, because it's in everybody's access computer. Memory. Good, yeah, good, good, good. Random access memory. And just real quick here, let me swap back over one last slide in the PowerPoint. Um, how does RAM work? Well, first of all, RAM, I mean, can be in just a simple little chip like this. You have multiple locations in RAM. Each one has its own unique binary address. So here it is in decimal, here it is in binary. I only did the first seven. And you can store whatever data you want to put in that particular spot. This particular chip I drew over here um, is a one kilo nibble <laughs> RAM chip, uh, which means nibble four bits. It can store a thousand four-bit pieces of information, and you can write whatever you want to any spot. Now, I, just one little quick note on this one. When we say one kilobyte in this, um, everything's base two. So for example, one kilobyte is actually 10 bits. And technically it's not a thousand, it's a 20 or it's a thousand twenty-four. And when you say a megabyte, it's actually two to the 20th, which is actually, oh, good grief, I don't know. I'm just gonna write 1024 squared. And when you say you've got a gigabyte of RAM, it's actually two to the 30th or this number squared, which means it's actually more than a billion. Um, oh, good grief, I just did, ah, I was thinking ahead of myself. Dang it, that's squared. Um, it's about a million, but it's actually a bit more than a million. And this is more than a thousand million or a billion. It's actually a little bit more. So when we say kilo and mega and giga in binary, it's not exactly a thousand, a million and a billion. It's actually a little bit more than that because we're working in base two algebra. Um, how, in the case of the block we're using in Circuitverse, it's actually a kilobyte, this many bytes of RAM. If you wanted to reproduce that, you'd actually have to use two of these chips because each one of these only stores one nibble. Um, here's the output, the four bits that it stores. This is both input and output. You can write the four bits and read the four bits from that. And then the address lines here, you'll see address, um, <laughs> address lines from A9 all the way down to A0. And that's 10 bits of address lines, which allows you to access the full 1,024 different addresses where you can each write one nibble worth of information. Are you okay? Sorry, I just wanna explain it real quick. Why is it called random access? Because you can read or write any location in RAM at any given time. All right, so, um, yeah, hopping back over here to circuit first. I was just debating about my, or in this RAM chip, how to set this one up real quick. All right, um, could you please, I think it's under inputs again, um, add a, a binary counter, make sure you get the binary counter. And we're gonna set the output of that to the address. Now, before, wait, before you do that, because this is a one kilobyte RAM chip, it has 1,024 or 10 bit address. Could you please go to the counter and change it to a 10 bit binary counter so it can access all the pieces? Um, and then connect the value over here to address. And then grab a button. and hook that up to the clock input. And let's label this one step. This is going to advance our counter each time we click it. And let's grab another button real quick and put it down below here. Oh, that's interesting, we think hold it the exact same thing. And there's a reset button down here and let's name this button reset. When you press the reset button, it'll automatically put the counter back at zero. Um, and then um, while we're on the input here, um, let's go ahead and add 
our data. Um, so input bits, we're gonna use eight bits. That's our data we're writing in and the late, table, or late, label should be data in. Um, and that's going to go to the data in pin. So this is the data we're gonna to write to each of the, the memory locations. Um, and we need one more button here. Um, oh, yay. Um, uh, yay, Kira made it. Um, this is the write button. And what this does is when we make this high, it writes whatever data we have here um, into RAM. Morning, Kira. Um, so those are that. And then for outputs, uh, two of them real quick. So digital output, um, let's add one up on top here. This is gonna be 10 bits wide because we're working with a kilobit. Um, and I'm gonna label this one address just so we can sort of visually see what the address is at any given time and hook that whatever the counter is. So right now it's at zero, just showing it binary and zero. And then add one more of these over here to output. And this is going to display the data that's in there. And again, it's got to be eight bits. That's how many bits are, or each bit in each byte. Um, and let's label that one data out just so we can sort of see what's happening. Whoops, why is it not happy? I did make it eight bit wide, yeah? Why is it red? What did I do wrong? All right, let me rewire that. Maybe it's angry because, oh, there, okay, yeah, there it's happy. <laughs> it still thought, wait, you've got a one bit data out and you connected it to an eight bit input. So here it is. We've got our just little, really, really basic RAM setup. How does it work? Um, let's say I want to write uh, one, 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 zero, zero, zero to memory location or address zero, which is what the address is set at right now. If you hit the right button just briefly, you'll discover that that now is written in that spot. Um, and it will stay there until it's rewritten. So if we step forward to memory location 0000000001, 000 000 000 000 000 000 000 000 we can write another bit pattern. We could write the same thing, but let's go change it a little bit. Um, let's write 1111 one, 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 just because it's easy to recognize and write it to that location. Oh, sorry, go ahead, say something. What was the setting thing you changed earlier? Okay. Um, okay. For the counter, um, the binary counter needs to be 10 bits wide. And then um, this data display that shows the address also has to be 10 bits wide. Uh, but our data in and data out are both just 8 bits. Um, doo -doo -doo. And we've written that to an address one. Let's go one further step forward. Um, and then finally in address three, let's write all ones. So again, put all, whoops, all ones here and the data in, write it. You'll see it shows up data out. Now, if we step through this, if I go hit reset to put the address back to zero, you'll see our original 111000. Step forward, you'll see our 000111. Step forward one more time, all ones. And then the right, if you step forward from there, <laughs> all the rest of our memory locations are just zeros because um, <laughs> we haven't read anything there. Reset back to zero, you'll see our original bit patterns that we wrote. And I'm that's the, oh, sorry. I'm getting an error. Are you? Okay. You might have to disconnect the wires briefly and reconnect them if it thinks that you're. No, didn't you change something earlier when you first put in the counter along with the RAM? Yeah. So the counter has to have a bit width of 10. And then uh, make sure that you've got the value output of that connected to address. And then make sure this addressing appears also 10 bit. Um, so the address is 10 bit. Our data though is just one byte or eight bits. And you should be able to read and write now information just randomly in there. Um, hopefully. <laughs> and you can write some interesting random bit patterns. And so I'll, I'll write one more random one in here. Um, how about one zero zero one zero and write that into memory location address three. And now if I reset, you can step through and see all of the different bit patterns that we wrote to RAM. 
Um, and so they'll stay there as long as power is supplied. You ready to go down? Uh, they haven't officially called this down. Have officially called it. Okay, I'll wait yet. Yeah. Um, let me see if I can get our last circuit in no, before I have, have to go for Now they have? Yeah. Dang it. <laughs> um, all right. Sorry, buddy. I'm going to take a quick, I've got to do a quick break on this one. I'm going to pause the video recording for a second. I've got to go down for my NAT test. Um, I should be back in about 15 minutes. So could we rejoin for there's just one more circuit we have to do together. And I want to make sure we do it together because it is the most complex. It is in the worksheet you're doing tonight, but if we can build it together, I'd feel more confident. Um, so at 9.05, we'll come back together and we'll build that last circuit. So I'm going to pause the recording. We'll see you at 9.05. Everybody? Yep. Um, so this last step we're going to do is um, I, I need to actually tell you, it's a bit of an epic fail on my part. And I'll explain why in just a second. Um, so our first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to copy our RAM circuit we've got already. So holding down the shift key um, and then selecting this whole section. Hopefully I got it all. Uh, Command C, then clicking down here at the bottom of the screen and pasting it. And what we're going to do now is um, I wanted to do a little bit more interesting display. So underneath outputs, you'll find there is this one right here. It's the RGB, red, green, blue LED matrix. And so we're going to drag that out over here. And probably give ourselves a little bit more space. Um, and just so you can sort of see it real quick, um, here's my one annoyance. After I did this, I'm like, okay, this will be a really good example. Normally, LED matrices are very dumb. In other words, you, you send in your row, you send in your column, it lights up that LEDs or the LEDs and that particular one. And then you have to very quickly rewrite all of the columns fast enough that our eyes can see it. Remember when we did the, the RGB LEDs or the eight by eight LEDs with the Arduinos? You created images on there, but you did it, and I don't know if you realize it, by actually writing one column of LEDs with eight bits over and over again fast enough that it appeared to our eyes that they were all lit at one time or all lighted at one time. This particular um, RGB matrix is got is not exactly what I wanted. Um, why? Uh, this one actually acts almost like another RAM chip. Once you write a column, it remembers it um, as you write the, the other columns, uh, which kind of negates the need for an extra RAM chip, unfortunately. Uh, when I designed the circuit in my head, I was like, oh good, we can store our bit pattern in RAM and then just write it really quick to our display to create our image. In this case, it's got a little annoying features. Um, okay, so first of all, a couple of things we need to do. I'm gonna drag my data out up over here just so it's out of the way. Oh, that's nice. I'm gonna move or get rid of this line here and this line here. We'll fix that in a second. Um, and we're gonna add another splitter. Let me quick explain. Over on this side here, you see row zero through row seven that's connected to each of these rows across all eight rows uh, but right now our data out is eight bits and we need to split that into eight bits so i'm going to add a splitter again and but this time a slightly different thing there's eight bits going to be going into our splitter but the way i want to organize the output is one space 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 one. I want to break our eight bits all into individual bits. And you look at this thing like, holy smokes, Mr. Clomber. Yeah. But if you, the nice thing about it, it actually lines up. If you connect or move it over here, you can connect it directly to our display. Um, so eight bit splitter, eight is your input, and then your output is eight ones all separated by a space. Should I do that one more time for everybody to see? Are you good? What it's doing now is just taking our data output and it's going to take those eight bits and split them into single bits. So for example, if you write one, 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 one as our data input, it's gonna show up as a bunch of all, lit, all lighted LEDs. If you put in all zeros, it'll be all black. 
each one of these bits corresponds to one of the bits in your data in. Um, I'm also going to connect this to our, oops, uh, to our display so we can also see what's happening this way in case of disaster, since we already had this copied over. Um, so you can also see it over here. Now, um, how do we select the column that we're going to write to? Well, we would like this first column over here to be column zero, then this column one, two, three, four, five. So when we're on address zero, we select this column. And when we're on address one, we're in this column. When we're address two, we're in this column, three, four, five, six, seven. To do that, I'm going to have to do something a little bit more creative. Um, we're going to use what's called a decoder. And I guess I can just type that. It looks like this. And if you drag it down here, it's going to, you're like, what's a decoder? Um, a decoder takes binary and converts it into bits again. And you're like, you might say, Ms. Comer, why do I need to do that? While our address is in binary, when we select an address up here, address 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 is all stored in binary. But when I reference these address or the rows here or the columns, I need it to be that. How many bits do I need to access eight columns? Well, I need to make my decoder have three bits. So notice here now there are 0 to 7 as my outputs. And my input here now is a three-bit input. So by saying three bits of our address, I can access all of the different portions here. Um, the one thing about this right now is this unfortunately is not in a great direction. Um, so I'm gonna change its direction. Let's see, let's try up. I can't remember if that's the right way. Nope, down is the one I want. Um, so that these outputs line up with our inputs there and I think I can I don't know if I can do that or if I need to well let's try it let's see if I can just put it there and so now as if I just look at the last three bits of our address that's going to select which column we're using again I'm going to need another splitter and you're like holy smokes Mr. Palmer this is a complex circuit yeah I know uh, so another splitter this time we're going to take 10 address lines coming in here. And we're going to split it into a group of three and a group of seven. And it's only the first group of three that I'm going to pay attention to. The other seven I'm going to ignore. So real quick on the splitter here, and I'll talk this one through. Actually, let me cancel and do it one more time. The splitter I'm about to create, the input is 10 bits. And I'm going to split that into a group of three space seven say okay and just drag it somewhere down here doesn't matter where i guess and it's the zero to third bit that i'm going to connect to the input of my decoder so those three bits are going to select the column the zero to seven and where do i get the address from well from the output of the counter One more thing, and I'm realizing I'm getting out of space here. Actually, a couple more things. There is um, a color input on this thing. This selects the color of the RGB LED we're about, or the, the row that we're about to write to. And it's 24 bits. <laughs> and you're like, what? Yeah. Oh, bless you. Um, Oh no, ah, I'm so sorry, Mylon. Um, dang it. Oh yeah, sorry, I forgot to remind you this time. Could you please at this point, please save your project online. Uh, we're getting such a complex circuit um, that I'm terrified that things will go wrong. Um, Mylon just lost his page, it reloaded. And at that point, yeah. Um, let me launch the simulator again once I've gotten there. Sorry, I should have mentioned earlier, my fault, Mylan. I was so distracted by the NAT test. I forgot to remind everybody to, to save their circuit. That's the thing I did. Like you two did. Before, I went up saved. I typed in the name and everything, and it still 
it still didn't actually save. Oh man. All right. Um, that makes me officially annoyed. Um, that's not supposed to happen. It's that's the first time I've seen that part. Um, the color input requires 24 bits. So go to your input here, grab one of our one bit ones. And now this is hilarious. Put in 24 is the bit width <laughs> of this thing. You're like, holy smokes, Mr. Climber. Yeah, it's huge. Um, and I guess I should probably label it. Um, this is our color in red, green, blue bits. And we'll connect the output of that. Oh, which pin was it? Was it the top one? I think it is. Let me double check. I forgot. Oh, that one is column row color. Should trim off that little piece there. Okay. This specifies the color. One last thing. While we're doing inputs, could you add one more input? Because our display right now only has eight columns, we really don't want our address on our memory chip to go beyond that. Otherwise, it's just annoying. Um, so let's add one more input over here. Um, and change that bit width to 10. And this is our max value that we're gonna allow the counter to go to. And I realize I'm actually kind of in the way here. Let me clear that out for a second. Is this the max value pin? I always forget, yep. So we're gonna connect that to this. And our maximum value is just from zero to seven. So we don't want our counter to go beyond seven because that is zero to seven are all of the columns that we're gonna be writing to. Uh, you might say, Ms. Cumber, you know, this whole splitter, why are you throwing away the upper bits? Well, because it, yeah, we're only gonna be using the lower three bits of our address to address the various columns. So the data here ends up being these LEDs here. Um, and so it's interesting when I get things here. Um, could you please uh, set the color to all red? So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. The first eight bits of this is the how bright the red is. The next eight bits are how bright, bright the green is. The last eight bits are how bright the blue is going to be on, on our column. And we're at memory address zero. Um, and let's write in one zero one zero one zero one zero just because that's what I had on this one and hit write. Notice what just happened. We wrote that information to address zero. We also wrote that information to column zero of our LED. Bit zero is black. The next bit is on. And so this same exact pattern end up over here. Um, and you're like, okay, cool, Ms. Clomber. All right, switch the bit pattern. And let's step forward. So we're at address one, which will be now the column one of our display and write this here. And notice, oh, hey, look, we can create our own cool little bit patterns. Um, if I want to be a little cheesy, I could step to the third column and write it there <laughs> and step to the fifth column and write it there. And now maybe, oh, I don't know, what column that, that was that one? I can't tell. I've got two more columns left. Okay, step, step, write it there. Um, and then go backwards, um, let me reset. And maybe go back and write an alternating. Let's do a checkerboard pattern here real quick. So writing that at zero. And now here's the little fun part we can do. Um, it turns out when you write it, you can actually specify what color you want to write it sort of in real time. Uh, let's make this blue. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There we go. Oh, yeah, I got a chat here real quick. So I'm going to write that there. 
And I'm going to step forward to the column. Oh, wait, what did I? Oh, it's actually rewriting each of the columns as I address them. Oh, dang it. I was hoping to alternate colors. I guess you have to do it sequentially. Once you write it, if you go through that address again, it changes the color. Oh, man. Oh, well. That's interesting. I just learned something new. Um, we can write a nice little pattern. All right, chat. Okay, see you, Mylon. I knew this was going to happen. Don't worry, I've got the recording. And then if I just step forward to the next address without writing anything there, it should make it all blue. Um, you can do some very creative things. One of the annoying parts of this thing is now is if I try stepping forward, it goes back to zero. There's no clear button on the display. There's no way to simply get rid of all the data that's here. Um, and by the way, yeah, if you change colors as you go in real time, it actually is kind of weird. Oh. Yeah, a little red to it as well. Um, you, as you step through the memory addresses, even if I don't write anything, it takes whatever color I had and writes it to that spot. Um, it's really kind of annoying in some ways. Um, if you look at the worksheet, which I'm going to swap over here real quick so you can see it. Um, what's your homework for tonight? Well, sorry, swapping over to you. So you're going to build the same circuit we did. Um, it's got the splitter information here. If you're like, whoa, I don't remember how we did that. Um, and the various parts. And there's a couple of things I want you to do on the worksheet if I can get it to scroll. Um, is this one right here. I want you to be creative and create your own eight by eight graphics of your choice and then paste it below in the worksheet. Um, there's a couple of questions that go on all these. We've just built all of the circuits today already. Um, and you can step through it again if you need to. Um, but yeah, uh, congratulations. As I told you, we would finish early today. Uh, all you've got to do is actually just do a couple of things on this one and you are done. Um, it's pretty fast and, and furious. I will make a Dropbox for this in just a moment. You're like, what's coming up? You didn't have, don't have a Dropbox already? Literally, I finished writing these worksheets. <laughs> I've got to create these circuits to make sure they work. Um, and so when I make that I make the worksheets, I usually only get them done just literally I'm doing finishing touchings just before we get to class. Um, so my apologies on that. So I'll make the Dropbox for this. But yeah, you you should. We actually have all the circuits made at this point. Um, now it's just a bit of just answering the questions and playing with these a little bit. One of my questions is how in the world would you clear the display? And some of, the, of you might actually have the idea on this one. Um, uh, I won't give away the answer, but uh, please note that clearing just basically means setting the LEDs back to black, <laughs> which I probably just gave away the answer. Um, with that, I'm going to wrap things up here. So your homework tonight um, is to finish the questions on this worksheet. You've actually already built all the circuits. Um, I will post this video here and I'll make a Dropbox for this worksheet. Um, if you have any questions about building the circuits, I'll stay online for a bit, um, or you can also watch the video in just a second. Um, I'm going to stop my share at this point and stop the recording. Um, give me just a second. Um, all right. Um, and